In this video, we will explore the PowerShell security policies that were enabled, look at them within the native Windows operating system environment, and explore the audit capabilities so that Tanium can show you those settings at scale. And then we will simulate some logging activity. So here we can see the dashboards are available under the favorite categories for PowerShell security. We're going to look at PowerShell policy. PowerShell policy then has multiple saved questions that will give you insight readily to the settings across your environment. The first thing that we want to understand is what version of Windows and PowerShell do we have in the environment because we will need a minimum of PowerShell 5.0 for these capabilities. We see that we're at PowerShell 5.1, which is common for 2016 and Windows 10. But also notice that we have the PowerShell feature V2 enabled. That is a known bypass for the policies that we have turned on. Someone could type PowerShell.exe dash version 2 and run a command that would bypass these settings. So provided with this content, you can check the box, deploy an action, and you'll see an action to disable that feature there. The settings that we deployed with the packages earlier, we can see we're getting the uh, policy status across the machines for transcription, script block logging, module logging, to see where these are enabled. And you'll notice the uh, parameters that were specified earlier. However, notice that uh, this one machine in our list has not been hardened. Uh, the transcript directory is not hidden or hardened, and we haven't run the package to generate the file stats yet for that one. But on this other machine that is in scope and is being managed, we can see that the transcription policy has been enabled. The settings are there, and we can see that it is the transcript directory itself is hidden and hardened, which we'll look at shortly. The file count is by groups of 100, so there are less than 100 files in the transcript directory currently. Uh, current directory size is negligible at zero, so we can uh, take a look at that in a minute. And then the oldest file in weeks would be files within the last week generated there. So these statistics help you understand how big that directory is getting, how old the files are in that directory, and it helps you tune that package we used earlier, how many days of history do we want to retain on the endpoint. We can also see that module logging and script block logging have been enabled here. Scrolling down, we also have the event log status, which will show us the event logs, there are two Windows event logs, the PowerShell Operational and the Windows PowerShell. Windows PowerShell is the older, what's called as the legacy log in some of the content. That's where you'll see event ID 800. The operational logs where you'll see event ID 4103 and 4104. See the actual size of these logs is less than 16 gigs. These are 16 gig increments uh, for the file sizes, so 1 to 16 here. Max configured size, which was set in the policy as a gig. And we can see how old is the oldest event in these logs. That gives us an idea. If I set my log size to a gig, and it's actually a gig, how much data am I retaining in those logs to help me tune that in the environment? And it tells me that these logs are hardened as well. Those are all set with the packages that we did earlier. And then over here for... Uh, Additional information, we have execution policy, so we can see that across the environment really has no impact to the capabilities we're reviewing today. And finally, to see if execution policy has been set in the registry via GPO. So those are the policies uh, as an overview here that we can see that were deployed, and this is handy. Again, different than using Active Directory Group Policy because now uh, we actually can see whether the settings are actually enabled, not whether they were intended to be enabled. So let's take a look at a workstation here. Actually, it's a Windows Server 2016 machine. And here we have the logging and transcription turned on. So what we're going to do is simulate some activity in the PowerShell console. Who am I? I'm training administrator. Let's do a get service and get process and get SMB share. So running some PowerShell commands on the machine there. And then I'm going to uh, type exit. Now I'm going to launch the PowerShell session as a different user so that we can see the difference between multiple IDs. So I'm going to run this one as student01. 
and we will have a, a new PowerShell session launched as that other ID. So here, and I say, who am I? I see I'm now student one. I can run the same commands, get, dash, process, and so forth, and exit that session. Now that's been logging activity under that person. Now we're going to look at a technique that attackers use to try to hide what they're doing called the PowerShell encoded command. And simply by running a PowerShell executable with an encoded command, oh no, look, pew pew pew, PowerShell pwned. We've been had. They've run their malware in an encoded command and they can obfuscate and they can put it in that encoding and now we'll go try to find that in the logs. Uh, sometimes you'll see Tanium use this technique for good but often uh, hackers will use this for bad. So that's in the encoded command. Now let's go take a look at where we can find these commands in the history that we've been tracking. So you'll notice here that the uh, PS transcript directory that we set in policy earlier is not visible. That's because it has been hidden. So we can turn on viewing of hidden items. We also have to set the option for uh, showing the hidden operating system files here. And it says, are you sure? Yes, okay. Now, as an administrative user, as any user on the machine, I can see the PS transcript directory. But uh, anybody would not have access to this, though, unless they were an administrator, which we are. Now we can go into that directory, and we can see the date stamp on the directory. And here's a list of all the commands that have been run on the system since we've been doing our testing here. And you'll notice the file name has the computer name, a date timestamp encoded in it. And uh, let's uh, take a look at our earlier commands that we were running there. So if we go back here, we'll see training administrator that we logged in as. Here's the PID, or the process ID that will be useful later for coordinating things. And notice here's our who am I command that we ran. It told us who we were get process and that was when we ran as administrator let's also take a look as when we ran as student one remember we launched a different process we can see a different user ran these commands under a different process id we have the date timestamp for the commands we see again who am i student one and the commands that that student ran and their output but now more importantly we want to see this pew 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 business uh, where that we got pwned. So here what you can see now is that that was run under the administrator account. The host application shows the entire encoded command. It scrolls off the screen there. Uh, and then down here with the timestamp, notice though what happened inside that encoded command. It's invoke expression is the alias IEX pew 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 PowerShell. Notice there's some concatenation of the strings. And I know because I created this, there's actually other uh, obfuscation that was happening, but you'll see that it was unraveled, so to speak, to be displayed in plain text here in the log. So we can see not only the encoded command that was used to run it, but we can see the plain text version of what that command was, and that's the power of PowerShell transcription. Now let's go find these in the event logs also. So we have the Windows PowerShell operational log here. I'm going to hit refresh. And now if we take a look down here in the message body, uh, we can look through our 4104s. That would be our script block logging. And we'll just cruise through here until we can find. Uh, here's a script block text right there. Pew, 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 PowerShell pwned. 4104, that's the script block logging that happened. We see the time index, 8.18.23 a.m. And so I'm guessing if we look right here, there's invoke expression. That's the 4103 for pipeline module logging. We can see that command there. And those two different methods of logging, 4104, 4103. But then also, if we collapse this big list of logs here, and go to what I call the legacy log, we'll see the same behavior as the 4103 and the event ID 800. 
So here if we look at event ID 800 and down here at the bottom we look through the history we see training administrator there's our encoded command that was executed and if we scroll down there it is pew 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 powershell pwned. So uh, using these techniques then uh, we can see that we've got script block logging, module logging, and transcription. And there's one other thing that I want to uh, show you, one other last place we can find PowerShell history. So uh, you'll notice when I type get-module here that it's in yellow, and I use tab complete. Uh, that's a feature of PS Readline, a module that's available in most modern installs of PowerShell. It's been around for a long time. But one of the features of this is it gives you a Unix-like command history that's persistent between sessions. So if I do a command get PS Readline options, what you'll see if we scroll back through here, is right here history save path it shows you where that command history file is stored notice it's in the users profile path under app data and also it tells us here maximum history count and that tells us we're going to remember the last 4096 commands that were typed interactively now this is very easy to bypass you can simply unload the module type and remove dash module ps read line but this will give you a nice history so what we can do then to view that is let's say get ps read line option and we'll do dot history save path that's the path to the file that we want to read and then I can do a get content on that and here's a list of the previous commands that were interactively typed. Now the big downside here is to notice that there's no time stamping. All you have is the timestamp on the file the last time it was touched. But this who am I command, we knew it was run today, but it could have been run a year ago. We have no idea when that command was run. So that's the one downside uh, to this option. But there you have it, multiple ways that we can track the activity of PowerShell on a machine. Finally, we're going to drop in some known bad commands. On this particular uh, Windows instance, we have Disabled Defender, which includes the anti-malware scan interface, AMSI, or AMPSI for short. If I type Invoke Mimikatz, it would intercept that command and tell me that it was a potentially malicious command and not execute it. It would log an event in the Windows Defender log. In this case, we've turned that off, uh, which uh, is the equivalent of running some other anti antivirus product on the machine. So it actually permits the command, but then it tells me that it's not recognized. Uh, Mimikatz being one of the most popular examples people would use. But you'll notice that it was not invoked actually on the machine. It was not installed. However, it does now appear in the logs. So we would find invoke Mimikatz in all those locations that we just looked. So what we will do next then is we're going to go back to the Tanium console and now we're going to use the interact PowerShell security dashboard in the next segment we will go find these commands that were executed on the machine.